NFR. NFR Extra is a podcast dedicated to the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo and features icons and personalities that embody the Western lifestyle. It's cool to be able to uh, see all of us young guys that have watched these older guys that have been going to the finals for years and years, and we're, we're kind of just pushing them out. You know, it's uh, it's really cool. But, no, you, you walk into pretty well any bareback ride, and, and you're, you better bring your A game because everybody else is. I would say it knocked off the jitters, but like I tell Kai every year, like every round I go into, I want to puke. Like it doesn't go away <laughs> for me. Kai's like, really? I feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> it don't matter how that year's gone, good, bad, ugly, whatever. When you show up there, it's a whole nother ball game, and, and that's what you dream about, and that's where you want to win. So, yeah. The NFR, there's nothing better. This is Brylan Bentley, and you're listening to NFR Extra. So uh, one of the most fun episodes we had last year from our World Champions photo shoot was an accident. We just turned the mics on and left Tyler Waggis back and a few guys just rolling. Um, so what I'd like to do is, is just kind of start a conversation where you guys give us more of the nuts and bolts of what happens on a daily basis with rodeo. So, for instance, we've got guys that are are young here today with Keenan Hayes, Kai Hamilton, and Stetson Wright. So your accomplishments vary. We've got two first-time world champions and one of the most decorated cowboys of all time. But with with your young careers, I want to start with Keenan. Keenan, give us one of your, your biggest rodeo highlights up to this point. Oh, man. Uh, probably just this finals last year. It was uh, – it was pretty amazing just being able to come in there and uh, uh, and just ride like I was all year long and uh, and worked out in the end. So, did you feel like you had any NFR rookie jitters? Oh yeah, yeah. I come in here not sure in what was going on, and then that uh, first round got postponed. So it was kind of all just all wild, you know. And uh, I just kind of took it like I did every other rodeo. Had a good time and probably spent a little more time than I should at the South Point, but <laughs> <laughs> I think it helped out. <laughs> So did you guys do anything different? Like your first time in those yellow buck and shoots, like how do you, how do you mentally prepare for that? I don't know. How, probably prepare and uh, I don't know. For me, it was more of uh, if I was prepared physically, I knew I'd be fine mentally. So, uh, I mean, I got on a lot of practice balls and stuff like that, and I felt like I was riding good and I, I was staying on everything. So, I mean, that helped me mentally. Stetson, do you feel like your your family being here for so many years helped you? Oh yeah, when I showed up, I, I mean, I, I it sounds funny saying it because people be like, I watch it on TV all the time, but like I grew up coming here, so when it was my turn, like I'd already felt like I'd been here a million times, and I mean, playing it out in my head, and my first round and my first in a far went exactly how I'd always dreamed it going, and from there, like I, I would say it knocked off the jitters, but. Like I tell Kai every year, like every round I go into, I want to puke. Like it doesn't go away for me. <laughs> Kai's like, really? I feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> Guy's like, I'm not even nervous. I'm like over there puking. <laughs> oh Well, being rough stock guys now, is, is there something that, that you're trying to look on the day sheet and go, okay, out of this pen, I want this bull or this horse? Do you, do you guys even look at that or is it just – Hey, I've got to compete on what's been drawn for me. So for me, yeah, it's it's what I drawn, that's what I gotta deal with. But like Kai, he don't even look at the draw. Like I'm the one who always goes and tells him, I'm like, You wanna know? He's like, No. And I'm like, Well, I'm gonna tell you anyways. <laughs> so when do you find out? Whenever someone decides to tell me. I I it doesn't make a care in the world to me what I got drawn. I mean, your job's to make the whistle. You sure. make the whistle. Everything else takes care of itself. So. so, so there's really little to no pregame strategy for you. It's just go, go ride a bull. Keep your hand shut and stay on. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth, though. Like yep. it is. Yeah, everybody, everybody goes about it differently. Like 
me and Kai both do really well. He doesn't look at the draw. I look at it. It doesn't bug me. I like manifesting it, like watching it in my head a million times before I do it. Kai likes to just find out what he's getting on when he's putting his rope on him. And that works for him. And what I do works for me. And clearly whatever Keenan does works for him. (laughs) Yeah, I, I would guess so. Yeah, it's a lot like Kai's for sure. Really? Yeah, I don't look at it a whole lot and shoot, you ain't going to change the draw and we get on the same horses all year long. So, I mean, just go and do your job. So, with with you being newer to bareback riding, though, for for those that may have, you know, come to their first NFR or, or may not have seen you on your, your permit year, do you feel like there's a type of horse that fits you better? Oh, yeah. I mean, kind of and kind of not really. Like, there's... I mean, Colin Pickett's pet, and I mean, that's sure. pretty dang well anybody. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, when they run them e-penners in, I, I kind of crave them, you know, like uh, them big scary buckers. I'd rather get on them. They seem to be easier to uh, to spur, you know. Like, they, they're giving you as much as you can grab a hold of, and, and you just kind of go and do it. But, no, I, uh, shoot, coming into all my permit and everything, I really didn't know any horses. So I'd see what I had drawn. It really didn't mean nothing to me because I didn't know what it was, and, uh, now I'm starting to remember horses, but there's so many with the same the same names or just switch names. <laughs> right, I get so right. dang confused. I, right. I that's why I hate the draw so much. <laughs> <laughs> With the drafts, I mean, yeah. Well, I I want to know which group because Stetson, you're you're playing in multiple groups, but do you feel like there's better communication between? Saddle bronc, bull riders, bareback riders about horses and bulls. Like who do you, who do you think communicates the best? Uh, saddle bronc riders for sure okay. communicate the best. There's there's about one bull rider that I get along with, and he's sitting with me. <laughs> well, not not that I have problems. Right, right. No, I like I, get I don't that. have problems with that. nobody, yeah. but like Kai is literally the only one that has like similar mindset to me. Like like what he said. Like whatever I draw, I'm going to ride regardless of right what it is or what he's done before and that's kind of how bronc riders go about it like if as long as it's not one that can physically hurt you in the shoots or flip over like we're all out there just to go tear their heads off like yeah. that that's just how we were raised and like all bronc riders are that way and as of right now i know of one bull rider other than me that thinks that way right keenan how's yep. the communication oh bareback riding uh you know, there's guys that you talk to, and there's guys you don't as much. And uh, and you, shoot, we usually don't talk much about horses. We could ride, and that's about it. You know, and uh, see the videos, and but yeah, no, we. Uh, I mean, I get. I bet there's more guys, different guys that talk about it a lot more. But I, I'm off on doing some other things when I'm when I'm when I get off at the rodeo. I get my stuff put away, and I'm off to whatever I'm doing that night. And uh, that's. You're rodeoing year round, you know. You kind of got to break that stuff up. Now, who are you traveling with this year? Uh, I got Br- Taylor Broussard and uh, Colton Clemens jumping in with me this year, and uh, uh, looks like a good group. Okay. Any weird superstitions or things that you have to like? I mean, because uh, for for those that don't understand, you guys are literally spending hours and hours and hours in a confined space <laughs> with these people. So, th- if there's any secrets, there's not very many. Uh, so. Right. Uh, shoot for superstitions. Not really. I mean, I don't really like to wear yellow, but I think it's just an ugly color, really. <laughs> uh, but other than that, I just don't put my hat on the bed. Yes, yep. mainly because it gets smashed, but I don't think it's bad luck, you know? <laughs> Kai, are you superstitious at all? No, I think our superstitious is we aren't superstitious. <laughs> That's literally what we've come to conclusion. Like, like some people put their boots on a certain way. Well, I'll notice that I'll get into a routine of putting a boot on a certain way, and I'll be winning, and I'm like, I got to switch this up, prove to myself that I'll win putting the other boot on. Then I'm like, well, now are you superstitious about not being superstitious? <laughs> like, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah, I feel like I throw my hat on the bed just to prove a point. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> watch this. Look, I won tonight. <laughs> Let's get rid of the demons now. Oh, gosh. All right, what about road songs? Do you, do you guys have different playlists that you like to listen to while you're traveling oh it just kind of depends on the mood uh the morning playlist is a lot different than the pulling up to the rodeo playlist okay. but you know you usually go back and forth a couple of times during the day <laughs> well I, I didn't know if if you're on like a you know a, a slow streak or something you start playing yacht rock or something to kind of calm you down <laughs> kind 
Or Red Hot Chili Peppers. I don't have no calming songs. Like, it's Kid Rocks, like, stuff like that all the time. Like, from when we wake up, and I'm always turning it down, I'm like, dude, why do we got to listen to this? <laughs> like, it's nine in the morning. We're not partying. It's got to be rocking 24-7. <laughs> oh, gosh. Now, speaking of, of different venues, are, are there certain places for different reasons that you can't wait to get back to? You know, because, like, as an announcer, there's certain places I like to go for different reasons. Like, my family goes to Estes Park because the weather's great in July, you know, and there's plenty of touristy stuff to do. Um, but are, are there different reasons that you guys like going back to different places? Uh, Yeah. Uh, there's, like, San Angelo has treated me good for, uh, like, three years in a row now. So, like, that's one just because you always do good at that you always want to go back to uh, – but there's other ones like Ellensburg and, and just the uh, old school cool rodeos that you come in come into and the atmosphere is just old school and different, you know. Like they, they some of them rodeos just feel different than the rest of them, and uh, I think them ones with that old school feeling, I I really like. Uh, probably Houston. Houston for me. Uh, I mean, I've always done good there, but uh, just the amount of people in there, mm-hmm. like. And the size of that arena, I think that's what does it for me. But then, in the same token, I mean, the NFR, it it don't matter how that year's gone, good, bad, ugly, whatever. When you show up there, it's a whole nother ball game, and, and that's what you dream about, and that's where you want to win. So, uh, yeah. All right, Stetson, and I, don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I want to follow up on this point, because you're right. The final day at Houston... You know, there are some crowds at Houston that aren't rodeo crowds, but that final day, it flips a switch. Like, you got 70,000 rodeo fans, so that it is a totally different vibe. And, you know, I, I got to do the NFR for the first time in the Thomas and Mac, and when they start playing Viva Las Vegas, it, it does. It sends a chill down your spine, and you're like, okay, this is, this is real now, you know? And for us, you almost have to... You know, you guys have eight seconds to go full force. Whereas for us, it's like, all right, you got two and a half hours. You almost have to pull yourself back a little bit because, you know, it's not a rock concert. You have to ride the ebbs and flows. You can't just go out there and scream. But I I, I understand completely what you're saying. All right, Stetson. The NFR, there's nothing better. I mean, I love every single rodeo, especially sitting out. It makes me appreciate and miss and love everyone that I get to go to. But that in a far, even sitting out for them eight days, sure. like, I still got goosebumps every single night, and I wasn't even competing. And, I mean, there's nothing that's better than listening to this place roar when somebody makes a good ride or a fast time, whatever there is. Like, the NFR is where it's at, and it'll always be the greatest rodeo on dirt. So would you rather win, uh, win a round in the saddle bronc riding or the bull riding, or it doesn't matter? It it doesn't matter. It I mean, they're different as far as the feeling goes because, like, Bronc Ride, so, like, uh, like the flow of it. Sure. It's, like, a good song, like, just gets you in the rhythm to where riding the rank bull here and the, everybody stands on their feet and they're going crazy. That that feeling, that so I would actually bull riding because that feeling, you're nor well, Kai knows, you're normally the last guy out winning the round and then running down the alley yeah. to get on the victory lap force and it I mean everything. It is just like thinking about it right now makes me ready to get back here <laughs> next year. <laughs> or this it's, year. It's it's like Kai turning up Kid Rock at nine in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Well since since you guys are are slowly becoming veterans, you know, I, I mean I, I want to know with the youth that you see, because I know you guys see a lot of young people, what kind of advice do you have for the next generation of rodeo? Man, uh, you keep going at it and just light that fire. There's a, uh, there's a lot of kids nowadays I've seen that just don't really have the mentality that a lot of the guys that are making the finals around these years, you know, when we were kids, we were getting on as many as they'd let us get on. And uh, now you go to these schools and you almost kind of got to beg them to get on. So uh, I think that's just the main thing. Like, the mentality is just not, not the same as it used to be, and I think if they could switch that, I mean, there's so many kids with talent. Like, if they could just get mean about it and have a little bit of fight back, I think it'd go a long way for them. 
Yeah, I'm kind of on the same bandwagon as Keenan. That old school c- curl is pretty dang cool. Like, uh, shoot, I grew up watching Jim Sharp, Tuff Hederman, Troy Duns, those kind of guys. I, I feel like their mentality, uh, I've fed off it a lot. And I think if the younger guys nowadays could have that same kind of mentality, I think that's a great benefit. Yeah, I'm with them. Well, it, it's funny you say that because you look up to guys like your dad, Cody, and, you know, my dad's a, a peanut farmer, and I've I've just tried to follow him around on certain days, and you're like, geez, I'm, I'm a 37-year-old wimp because this 62-year-old man can still outwork me, you know? So it it's funny you say that, but that consistent work ethic is really what it takes if you want to get to the next level because uh, we had a chat with Zeke, and Zeke was saying – there's plenty of times where I don't want to get in the truck and get on that next horse. But if I don't, someone else is going to, and that puts me a day behind. So I, I think you guys are right, is that that consistency, consistency and continuing to step up to the plate is what makes a big difference. All right, how do you, how do you balance your, your schedule with your family life and your home life? I mean, you know, throughout the summer... I know how much I'm gone. I mean, you guys travel even more than I do. So how do you how do you find that balance? Oh, uh, I'm still kind of figuring it out. Uh, uh, being on my card this last year is my first year on my card, and uh, just kind of figuring out and getting my toes wet, you know, and seeing what I need to go to. And uh, like my first two permit years, I went and went and went. I think I went to 130 my second permit year. So like I was wow. never home. Uh, which after after a couple of years of doing it that way, you get, you get tired of it. Sure. And, uh, well, there's so much stuff back home that needs done when you get back. Finally, right. it's just a pain. But, uh, like, like nowadays, uh, this year I've, I've definitely dialed it back a little bit and am able to kind of go what I, where I want to in the bigger ones and just kind of focus on it. And, and that's just kind of comes with, uh, how you're sitting, you know, like if you're sitting good, you don't have to go to as much, uh, no, I like to get back home and get stuff done and hang out in the cool weather as much as I can and especially get out of Texas in that winter time, you know, like <laughs> after a couple of months here, I'm tired of it, you yeah, know, and yeah. uh, get some, get seeing different sites, you know. Now, speaking of home, Kai, do you ever get to go back to Australia? Uh, since I've been here for six years, I've been home uh, two times. And I mean, uh, this is what I want to do. I wanted to come over here. So, I mean, it... It's a shame, I, like I miss my family and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, uh, this is where I want to be and and what I want to do. And it it just so happens that uh, one of my best friends, that's well, is my best friend. That's the guy I get to go down the road with, and and he's a winner. And uh, I think it kind of makes that all a little bit easier when you can go with someone that not only is a great competitor but a great friend too. I mean that that makes life a lot easier when your family is on the other side of the world. Now, do any of them ever get to come here? Oh, yeah. Mom and Dad, they've been over every year for the finals, except for, I think, COVID. They were stuck <laughs> Your first one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but thankful to the Cowboy Channel, they were able to watch it at home. So, yeah, it's pretty good. What about you? My turn? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, the, the balance of trying to be the best and then trying to – I guess be a good dad. Um, for me, it's like from the start, I, I set out to be the king of the Cowboys. And I mean, like my family always comes first, but the way I look at it, like if I go out there, do my job, because like you were saying, Zeke said, like the day I miss is the day that they get ahead. Sure. And like, I, I make sure that nobody can get ahead of me. Like I, I take the re-rides. I, I go to the rodeos where they say I can't, I can't win on a, a certain animal. Sure. And, like I show up because like no matter how tired I get of rodeo, like when you're getting beat up and down the road, um, like the end goal is to be the king of the Cowboys and it comes with lots of sacrifices. Like you, you lose a lot of people along the way, but I mean the people that stick with you are, are the dang for sure worth keeping and you try to keep them happy. And I mean, that that's how I've always went about it is, the the people that are truly there will stick with me and and I'll make sure to take them to the top with me. Sure. Well, you you've also put some events on as well, Stetson, and and I think all of you guys can can talk on this. What 
what do you see from a community standpoint that that rodeo really does for for people in our country today? There, there's a big impact like that. I guess my bore and that I put on, um, me, me and my mom pretty much put it on by ourselves. But I mean, there's no way that I could if like the the small companies and businesses in the town didn't support it. And then the day of it, all the fans that co- come from all over the county to state surrounding. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it it's a huge thing having like just I guess an awesome support system that I have because that's pretty much what drags them people in or the people that think so highly of me. Well it, it just I, I think we all have different events too. It doesn't matter what town you're in. Like they circle the rodeo weekend on their calendar. You know, like uh Bonifay, Florida is one it's always the first weekend in October, you know, and it's just it brings that community together and and i mean there's there's so many different ones but i i just i think that these types of events and the sport that we love is truly part of the backbone that makes this country great in my opinion and i i just i didn't know if you guys thought of little places where man i i love that this community comes together because of this event oh man there's you go into them little circuit rodeos and these that we don't really even get to go to anymore, you know, like shoot one that I think about is that Grover, Colorado, mm-hmm. like it. That's uh that's the most professional amateur rodeo I've ever seen. You know, <laughs> yeah. like it yeah. I think they only have three, four hundred dollars added, maybe a little bit more now, but like it's it's just a little community. Like when you go in there and you're trying to find the address, it's south of the water tower on the PSN. <laughs> <laughs> you just find the water tower, you know. So like some stuff like that, and like it's it's such a cool rodeo right in the middle of a hot day, you know, and it just brings everybody from, I don't think from town because I don't think there's enough houses in town for all the people that go there, <laughs> but uh, yeah, everywhere surrounding they just come to the middle of nowhere, south of somewhere. So I don't really know the plains of Colorado, and they just come and have a blast. Is you it? Know? I, I it's been a minute. I went to the tire shop in Grover one time, but is it just a stop sign or is there a blinking light? Or I, don't, I don't even think they got one of them. Yeah, I, uh, I, I think you just go straight. I've never town. been to Grover until <laughs> I entered the rodeo. I didn't know the place oh. existed. <laughs> Let's take a quick pause, and we'll be right back. Do you need a dose of social? A dash of insider info? then the National Finals Rodeo's social network is set up just for you. Get updates, insights, unique content, and much more on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can find us at forward slash Las Vegas NFR. Be sure to use hashtag Wrangler NFR on your posts and tweets. There's something for all rodeo fans. The biggest stage, the brightest lights, the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo. All right, well, this this is a question I don't know if it gets asked enough, but I, I want to know, is, is there a competitor in the past and now in the present that kind of makes you raise your game up a little bit? Like somebody that you, you looked up to in the past, but also somebody that you're competing against today that you're like, okay, this guy showed up, like I have to be on my A game. Yeah, man, uh just like that entire bareback rider room like not just the room here you know like just the entire year long you know like there's there's so many young guys that I grew up with that I remember we were fist fighting back in high school for the national title and stuff and uh it's kind of the same group of guys you know and it's it's cool to be able to uh see all of us young guys that have watched these older guys that have been going to the finals for years and years and we're, we're kind of just pushing them out, you know, it's, uh, it's really cool, but no, you, you walk into pretty well any bareback ride and, and you're, you better bring your A game because everybody else is. And so it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I think back in 2021, JB made his first NFR mm-hmm. and that was someone I looked up to whole time growing up riding and stuff and be able to get to share a locker room with that guy. When you showed up, you were damn sure going to be a cowboy about things and, and you weren't going to be a pussy because <laughs> that that guy, I mean, I got to become close with him and, and he'd rag on if you, you if you did. And uh, 
So getting to compete against that guy and then and then Stetson, like, you know, you got to do your job and do it to the best of your ability because if you don't, them guys are going to take it off you. Like, it. that's the beauty of competition. I mean, you're only as good as the guys you compete against. So when you got good competition like that, it just makes you better. Yeah, did I see that he was ragging on you the other day about some of your practice bulls, saying they were a little on the soft side? Was that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprising, though, that JB would yeah. take a jab. But uh, all right, you, Stetson. Well, I'm with Kai. It, like, being around JB was awesome. But the the guy that really pushed me is Kai. Like he said, like, there there was nobody that I knew that was mentally as strong as Kai. Well, still, I'm not saying that's sure. the thing of the past. Sure. But, like, Kai's always been so mentally sharp on everything. And, like, once it all clicked, like, everybody knew in the locker room, like, shit. Kai, Kai's got it going on now. And then in the Bronc riding, it's always been my brother Ryder. And he he's always been, like, I've, I've never seen somebody so mentally sharp like Ryder. Like, nothing phases him. Like, makes a good ride, same facial expression. Mm-hmm. Makes a bad ride. Like, nothing changes. But he, to me, he's a spit. Like, the way I look at him is I'm getting a rodeo with my dad. Even though no, that never happened for me, like Ryder to me is a miniature Cody. And so every, every rodeo I get a ride against Ryder, it's, it's super special. Just, well, for one, cause I think he's one of the greatest, if not the greatest bronc rider to ever live. And that's saying a lot because I, I think my dad's amazing, but Ryder's always been that guy that I always looked up to. He was always was well, just a little bit older than me, and I was always just second place behind him everywhere I went. And he pushed me and made me, well, he taught me how to lose. <laughs> and he taught me that I hated losing. Right, and right. So, so for that, he also taught me how to want to win. And that that rider for sure is the guy that I've looked up to as a whole, like my whole career. All right, now... Uh, before we wrap things up, I, I do, since you both kind of went through it together, I, I do want to hear a little bit of the injury riddled NFR and how you guys were able to bounce back because, you know, I, I felt for you Stetson, obviously, because you couldn't finish, but Kai, there or were start. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, you did start, but you didn't finish the way you wanted to, obviously. But Kai, there were a few times where I'm like, this guy's done. Like, I, I mean, just watching, standing there at the podium, like, I, I, you know, just as a bystander, I'm like, he, he's done. Like, there's no way he's going to be able to get on again. And then here comes Kai Hamilton. And Kai Hamilton does Kai Hamilton things. And I, I was just, I was flabbergasted. So, if, if you will, just kind of give us your version of said story, because I, I don't think I've heard it. So, the NM4 last year, going in, I did get on my first bull, well, and Kai got on him. We were one, we were one and two in the world, right? Yeah. So he goes, wins the round. Mine ends. Going into round two after that bronc, I knew I was done, and I wanted to go on the back of the shoots and help him. But I'm like, so this is where superstition came in for me. <laughs> so I have had one superstition. He won the first round, so I'm like, I'll just stay on the back of the shoot or stay in the locker room. Well. He does good in round two. Like, he was doing good in all these rounds. What what was it, round seven you got hurt? or Five. Oh it, was, oh, it was five. So I stayed in the locker room. Well, round five, when that bull whipped him down, I went running out of the locker room. Well. <laughs> oh, you can now? <laughs> well, no. well, I was going to say I ran, but I wasn't doing any running. Dragging running. a leg, yeah. I dragged my leg down there, and <laughs> I thought he was dead. Like, it was Scary to watch on TV. I'm so glad I wasn't out there to see it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, but, yeah, we went to the hospital that night, and, like, I had heard rumors that if you sat out any round, it pulled you from the average. But growing up, I'd only known the bronc ride, and if you did sit out a round, it didn't take you out of the average. Just everybody stays on. Right, everything. right. Everybody so, rides So 10. you go out of the average yes. by yes. yourself. But it's not a rule. Yeah, yeah. So, it, so he was still number one in the average, even if he wouldn't have got on the next morning. Well, I didn't know that. My thing was just, we got to find a way to get him out of this bed and onto the bull, or I'm going to 
enter back in the NFR and try, <laughs> and try to win this gold buckle because, like, if Kai wasn't going to win it, like, I there was, I did not want anybody else to sure. win that thing. And, like, we're going over everything, and they're like, well, he can get on both bulls tomorrow night, be the first guy out and the last guy out. Well, the good – this is why I said I don't get along with the bull riders is because, like, in my opinion, like, if – if anybody thought Kai was faking, they're dumb as hell. But, like, for one, you stand together. Like, I don't care. Like, Cowboys should stand together. Sure. And, well, they caused a big uproar, sent it into a meeting, and, like, there was there was no rule because there's never been a double perf at the NFR sure. or a slack yeah. perf at the NFR. Yep. So, whatever. Like, I get why they made the decision. They didn't want to deal with all the cry – maybe 13 bull riders. So, <laughs> so whatever we, we ended up telling Kai and I mean, Kai was headed down in the locker room at nine in the morning to fight some bull riders. And I, I grabbed him for him. Like, just don't say nothing. Just go out and like, shut him up. Like, is, cause I wanted to go rip their heads off with him, but I'm like, it's not going to do anything. What are they going to do? Cry again? Like, yeah. so he goes out, makes that outstanding ride and, then falls it up later that night, being the only guy to stay on. And that, to me, he couldn't have hit him as hard physically as he did making that ride. And that was clearly the moment everybody knew he was the world champion. And I was kind of like, well, you can sit out now. <laughs> <laughs> so walk it, walk us through it from your side of it, because yeah, I, I, I'm, your side. I, I'm with Stetson. I, I mean, I, I was announcing in round five, and when it happened, I'm, I I thought that was my first thought. I'm like, he he might have just died. Like, and then when they told us, hey, round six, I was also there, you know, for the the morning perf. I was like, he's a game time decision, and I'm like, what what's the decision? Like, he's not riding, and then. You're there. I'm like, oh, okay. This with his ribs strapped exactly. up, and a cigarette in his yeah, mouth, exactly. just like, rolling down the road. I, I mean, it was like he's a zombie. But uh, how? T- tell us your side of the the story because I, I I'm fascinated to hear it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I shoot. I remember the the last thing I remember was looking at his nose, going, "This ain't gonna end well." <laughs> and then. I came to when they were wheeling me out of Thomas and Mac, and I mean, we went to the hospital. They did their scans. Uh, they wanted to keep me in because of the air pocket on my lung. And, uh, well, Stetson, JB, Dusty Tuckness, my mom and dad, they were there. And, uh, I mean, that they were wanting to keep me in uh, to do another scan in the morning to make sure it hadn't got worse before they let me go. Well, they were like, well, we can come in at, five in the morning do the scan we should have you out of here by 10 or 11 i'm like uh i'm like there's a perf starting at 10 i think it was 10 30 i'm like i gotta be out of here by eight o'clock right and well they're like we don't think that that's gonna be we're gonna be able to do that we'll try but well i'm calling tandy i'm calling uh dusty tuckness i'm like i don't want to stay in here like i ain't missing it i i'm fine i feel fine well then they're like, well, if you leave and something does happen, like insurance could have trouble. Like if, if you get in a bad uh, situation, like you could financially, it might not be good. I'm like, oh, hell. I'm <laughs> like, oh, all right, I'll stay in here. Well, they came in at five, did the scan. They had me out of there by seven thirty, eight o'clock. And, and, uh, and well, at the time, I didn't know that there was no concussion protocol. So I'm thinking, I got to go in there, see Tandy, I got to do these exercises and then pass this concussion protocol. They're not going to let me get on. Well, I hadn't slept all night. I'm like, I need to get some rest. Well, uh, I had talked to them about getting on the morning performance ball and the night performance ball all that night. I said, I'll get on too. I, I just need a couple of hours of sleep. And and that was all set in stone. It's like, okay, you can get on both of them that night. I'm like, all right, sounds good. I get a call at uh 9 30 that morning i was just about to have a sleep you either got to get on this morning or you have to miss this morning and tonight i'm like all right you guys want to play that game <laughs> 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 sounds good well i i mean i was hot like just 
because I knew what had went down with it all. And sure. I mean, I think looking back now, I was I was super mad, but I think it worked out for uh, the better because I was even more. De- it made me more determined right. than I was before I got to the NFR to win that gold buckle. And uh, I that ball I had that morning, I I was so confident I could have rode that thing with my tennis shoes. Like that's how high my <laughs> confidence was. And and well, Tandy had pulled me from the draw for round seven the night before because he didn't think I was going to be able to get on. So I didn't even know what I had drawn that night. And I walk in there that night and I had Devil's Advocate. And I mean, he's a big, scary Canadian bull. And nobody and, wanted him. Yeah, I'm like, all right. Sounds good. And <laughs> I, I mean, that's where I look back and it, like that determination, like it had made me so bad at mad and made me want to win it even more. It didn't matter what they ran in there that night. There was no way they were going to buck me off. And, and honestly, I wasn't even paying attention to what was going on, not realizing nobody had stayed on and until the, I think Cody Teal had a rewrite and he went right before me. And that was when I realized, I'm like, hell, all I got to do is make the whistle. I'm going to win 100,000. <laughs> and Stetson was back there telling me to go win. And, and I mean, it, it couldn't have worked out any better considering what happened the night before. So, Well, I, I really appreciate you guys sharing these stories with us. Uh, this is it's going to be a great few days here in Vegas, but we really look forward to seeing all of you guys back inside this building ready to do battle, and ready to bring back some more stories. So thank you guys for joining us on this roundtable for NFR Extra. Thank you. Thank you. Want to experience more of the NFR? Then visit nfrexperience.com, and we invite you to subscribe to NFR Extra on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and wherever you're listening right now. If you like what you've heard on NFR Extra, we would love it if you gave us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe. 